Oh. Must produce new video for the community. Time for part two. I would like to thank you guys for the massive support. I read every comment you guys make and the content warms my cold heart. We are growing and it would be a dream come true to hit a hundred thousand subscribers. So if you haven't joined the crew yet, do it. In today's video, we will continue the Left 4 Dead 2 multi-sheet and find some addresses and offsets. It's a necessity for the sheet to work, so in this video I will hold your hand while we find the local player, the entity list, the local view angles and some entity attributes like health, position and more. It might feel like this takes a while, but when you get the hang of it, you will find your offsets instantly. If you haven't watched part 1, then watch that and come back to this video. I don't want to explain things multiple times and as always, you can join the coffee membership to get the source code of the projects instantly. Okay, time for today's showcase. At the end of this video, you will have this. A text document with the following addresses and offsets for Left 4 Dead 2. So we have the local player, the entity list. We have some view angles, which means uh, the picture and yaw for the character. We also have some attributes for the entity. We have health, we have life state, we have an F flag. This is uh, this tells us if we're grounded or not. We have a VEC view offset which uh, is just an offset from the VEC origin position. And the VEC origin is our position. The team num is an integer that tells us if we're on the survivor team, if we're on the special infected team, uh, whatever team you want. And this is very important because in our program later, we will integrate these offsets and addresses. And we will use these entities, or not entities, but these addresses and offsets to read the life state of the character, to read all of these attributes, and then calculate the angles to aim at them, uh, calculate where they are on the screen, on the 2D screen, so we can draw ESP and so on, and a lot of stuff. So. Let's get right into it. All right, so let's find some addresses and offsets. In Steam, under Left 4 Dead 2, I have told you this in the last tutorial, but again, use dash insecure. If you open Sheet Onion on a server or with VAC enabled, you will get banned. So don't blame me if you, you get banned. I will use this map in this example, small achievement map, because uh, that map allows us to not be disturbed. But in game, we will open our console. And in the console, we will write map. And then you can choose whatever map you want. But uh, as I told you guys three seconds ago, I will use the achievement map, the small achievement map. And the reason why we use the console to write map and so on is because uh, if you don't, SV sheets uh, won't work. Or, yeah, it, it's that bad, it will actually not work. And if you did dash insecure properly, you should have back secure mode disabled in the console when you join. But enough of that. So we want to find our local player. And how we do that is by searching for the health address and then uh, go back or reverse from there. We go back, see what offset is from the player object that is the health. And when we have found 
the address of the object of our player, we will look for an entity list and for our local player pointer. So we will search for 100 because we had 100 and health or 100 health. First scan. We will type in the console hurt me. Now we have 90 health, so you will search for 90. Now we have 11 offsets. If I write hurt me again, some of these updated, but I think everyone. Never mind. So I've lost some health. Now I have 80. We can write hurt me again. Now we should have 70. So I'll just write 70. As you can see, 70. We have seven addresses. You might have 11, but that's fine. I will tell you or show you how to filter these out. So you will look for an address that has a, a single offset from the register, and this will point to the health. So go into Edit, then Settings. Go under debugger options, click on use VEH de debugger, otherwise it might crash. So we will check what accesses this address because the player object will access itself and that will give us the player object object address. So you can click on, I like to go bottom to up and you click right click then find what access or find out what accesses this address. And here we have some instructions. So I told you one register plus or plus one offset. And we should have the client.dll. There is a similar address that has the server DLL. Don't use that. Use this one. Uh, this ad or this instruction moves the health into EAX or uh, if you read ECX plus EC, if you read that, you'll get the health and we move that into EAX. EAX. If I uh, understood that instruction correctly. And because the offset of this health was EC in this instruction. We will have to take the address that it's offset it by, and that's ECX. Here you have an instruction that say, or that says EAX. That's fine too because I think they are the same address. Here we have ECX, 4D, and so on. Then on the end, here we have the same. So just pick. Uh, one of these with the EC offset, and we will take the register that we add with the offset, which here is ECX. We take that address, copy that, and we can address or add it to the table. We'll paste the address, we'll call it local player address. There we have it, but we want to find what points to this player address because this will reset once we uh, reset the game. So we will click on new scan, we will use hex and we will put the address of the player object because something is pointing to this ob or this address and we want to find a static address that points to this address. Now, uh, we, we got some results, and that's great, but we're interested in these static addresses, because uh, if we have a static address, we can find the player object each time the game restarts. If it is static, it means it doesn't change. Uh, so we will check out what these static addresses do. And instead of using the find out what accesses, we will use the browse this memory 
region and then tools then dissect data slash structures click on structures define new structure and here we have some interesting stuff so we have a pointer to an instance uh, if you remember this was our entity object our player object and here you can see that it actually says pointer to instance of c terror player that's great now we have one address one static address that leads to this terror player now uh, we don't know yet that this is the local player but uh, oh, i actually do since i've already found this out but let's assume that we don't know so we will write this down as a potential local player we have found an address that leads to a terror player and if we look at ec it should give us our health ec is offset 70 health we have 70 health in game looks promising so we will close this down and we will all uh, never mind this here we will double click and we will change the description to local player we will check out the next address because in source engine uh, this local player is also in the entity list so we can find our player there as well which also means if uh, uh, we should also be able to find our entity list when we go back from the health and go back from uh, the player object because the entity list is as i said also accessing the local player so uh, go to memory region i like to use my hotkeys or the shortcuts which is Control d Control n to define a new structure and the next address has some more interesting information here we can see our terror player again but we can also see a survivor bot uh, another survivor bot and finally uh, the last survivor bot which probably is these guys so this looks like an entity list and there seems to be 10 bytes or 10 in hex uh, difference between them so we also know now how we should loop this entity list but uh, let's see if we can find some uh, infected in this entity list so uh, i will spawn uh, a charger there we have him he's stupid but yeah it's a charger all right uh this shouldn't have up updated yet but if we close it down <laughs> he's still going at it let's add it to the address table and go into the structure again we can see that at 10 in hex down again we see our charger so it looks promising we can write this down for now if it stops working we'll find another one that's even more promising but we have our, our entity list we have our local player uh he's still going at it we will find the force jump and force shove here as well and also the view angles so now let's find the view angles for now and we will find the other stuff later i won't uh, waste your guys time so i think this guy needs to go first there we go let's go into a different room and 
compare now uh, to find the view angles of the character uh, you would probably think that it would be in the player object that we have found but uh, and you're right actually but we can't write this over or write over these and it will change in the game so we can find the view angles but we can't use them so we need to find some other view angles which are in the engine module that will allow us to forcibly write over them to fix the angle and so on so let's find these angles it goes pretty quickly you will search for a float and uh, with angles you know that there's 360 degrees in the yaw i believe and in the pitch it's 90 degrees and 90 degrees 180 in total since we can't go around but we can go around from left to right so for the pitch which is up and down it's actually not positive 90 at the top it's minus 89 and when when we go down it's positive 90 so we will hold our crosshair at the top and then just search for minus 89 first scan look down search for positive 89 repeat this couple of times you can since it's it goes minus when you look up you can search for decreased value I have a hotkey for it but decreased value when you aim upwards and when you aim downwards it will be increased value so let me just filter some of these out There we go. We have 94 addresses. These green ones uh, we will not use at this point. I don't think they work. But we will use one of these dynamic addresses. So we will copy all of the dynamic addresses, add them into the table, and we can take maybe half of them and select them shift then click and then hit space to freeze them now it should not let us move up and down or our crosshair up and down if it was the correct addresses so let's remove these because they were not the real ones and i think i'll go down to up this time take half of the addresses hit space and here you can see that we can't move up, we can't move down, and I think we have gotten the pitch. So it's one of these frozen addresses, but we can unfreeze half of them like that and check if it lets us move the mouse and no, or the crosser. We can unfreeze half more and it's, it lets us move our crosshair. So it's not one of these ones. We can unfreeze them. Let's go just a couple of addresses this time. Still frozen. We will go to the next one. Still frozen. Not frozen. So it's one of these two. Let's freeze this one. And it's frozen. So I think we have found our pitch. We can remove these other addresses that let us know where. And here we have the pitch. Now we need a yaw as well, but it's uh, incredibly easy. You just add four bytes to the address and you will have 
There you are. So if we freeze that, it's plus four, it shouldn't let us move left or right. So you don't have to worry about finding the yard as well. It's close by. All right. Now, this is a dynamic address, which means we will have to find a pointer like we did with all of these other ones, the local player and the entity list. Uh, and now we could do uh, watch out what, or look what accesses this address, but uh, I think the game crashes sometimes when you do that. So we will use pointer scanning for this one. We will use one level and we will have the maximum offset value to 20,000 uh, large offset value. And we will search. Let's call this f to pitch. All right. Now we have some pointer paths here, but we're actually only interested in an engine.dll base address. So we only have one here. Should be e easy to know which one is the correct one. We will add this to our address table and say local view angles. You can freeze that and shake. And there you go. We have a pointer. This should work when you restart the game. Otherwise, nah, it should work. If it doesn't, you have the incorrect one. But we have uh, some addresses now. We have the local player. Let's add a pointer to it. You see to get the health. Here we have the health of our character. Uh, we have some addresses now that we can work with, but we need some more attributes than just the health. And we will use Ghidra for this. You can use Ida as well. But All right, the second part of the tutorial. It won't be very long because how quick it is, but it's still powerful nonetheless. So the way I learned this, and it's a bit sad how late in I learned it, is you can find uh, networks uh, by using the module strings or yeah, so I followed guided hacking video on finding CSGO networks or network offsets and we can use this method with Ghidra uh, as, as easily and uh, that's exactly what we will do. So don't forget to watch guided hacking's video on this. Uh, it's great and you will probably learn more than me rambling about nonsense. Uh, so we have Ghidra here. If you have Ida, it will be the same. We will have to go into Steam, navigate to the game's properties. We can, or we go to installed files. You will have to browse the files. A window will pop up here. And in this Left 4 Dead 2 folder, let's close that window down. We will go into the Left 4 Dead 2 folder and then the bin folder. In this bin, bin folder, you can see some similar modules, the client DLL and the server.dll. We will drag the client.dll into Ghidra uh, projects tab. So just click OK once the window pops up and we will analyze this uh, so it's some information about or a summary of the deal of the of the file and we will click OK once that's down we will double click the client.dll and it will ask us 
Uh, client.dll has not been analyzed. Would you like to analyze it now? And we click yes. We will, it's barely visible, but they are enabled here, I think. Yeah, they're enabled. So we will click on analyze. Uh, you might think that I'm using a uh, dark mode, but I, I think this is the inverted colors, which is a, a little bit of goofy solution, <laughs> but that's how I did it. So it's loading here. For some reason, my task bar is in the way, but it's uh, loading. So let's let it do its work. All right, I'll, I'll let it do its thing. I think we can use the string list while it's loading. So if you're using Ida, you can, uh, I think it's the shortcut shift F12. I'm not sure, but in Ghidra, we will go to search and then four strings now. In this strings tab, I'll let it go by default and we will click search. So we have a lot of strings here and going through it like this would be time consuming. So we will find the offsets that we are seeking. So if you're familiar with source games, they use these names for their networks and so on, these variables for the class or the entity class. So for for the health, we could just search for health actually, and it should be something like M underscore health. So we can see the, the max health here, but we want the current health. I might have missed it that's the max health uh, health and the index zero so let's see if we can find uh, health our current health so here is the string for the health variable and we will click it this will bring us to its space in memory. So we can see some, uh, some cross references with this string. Or yeah, we will get the instructions that set the network. So we will take this string and we will right click on it. Under references, we will click on show references to this address. It should be similar to, to this in Ida. I think you just right click and then click on cross references or X reps. But we click on the references to this address. We select one of the instructions, this push. And here on the right side, you can see some decompiling. And here on the left side, we can see some similar values and start. Here you can see 0xec. Now in Shidanyan, if you remember, the offset to our health was ec. Here we can see I have the health 66 and we have confirmed that our offset and the one we found in Ghidra is correct. So when we know that we can find these offsets in Ghidra just by searching after them, let's find some other addresses that we want as well. So we have iHealth, we have already... Uh, let's uh, open a notepad and write all of these things down. So we have the local play that's just the address to an object let's remove it we have the local player here with the relative address let's paste that just say local player the list 
Going to tier list. That's the dynamic address. Let's remove that. We we'll have the local view angles. Local view angles. Offset because we had an offset for it. This 4AAC offset. There we go. Now let's add some heater offsets or yeah, uh, some player offsets. So we have the health. Let's just write 0xec health. Now let's find the next address. We can look to the right because they seem to be close in memory. Last weapon, life state. Life state is really important. So uh, let's take a look in the right side. We have the eye health. We have the life state. Now this life state, uh, it says it's 147 or the offset is 147. And that's true for your regular or uh, the survivor and special infected. But actually, the common infected seem to have their life state at the bit or at 144 for some reason. So instead of writing 147 here, we will be writing. 144 here and we will read it as an integer and not a bytes here so I used 147 before I figured it figured this out and it was a real pain not having uh, or having the common infected just staying alive for way longer than they should have so we have the life state how long they are, or if they're alive or not. We have uh, cool things like F flag. The F flag is uh, it's a flag that either tells tells us if or if we're jumping or we're standing on the ground or if, if we're crouching. We can use that for the, yeah, use that for the bio. So we will write it down F flag. Let's see if we can see some vectors for the origin and so on. We had a vec view offset. That could be interesting. Let me just check my sheet sheet. Yeah, so we will write down the vec view offset and the first one of the free floats. It's a vector, so it's Three floats in a row, but we will only be counting on, I believe, the last one because it's the C axis and the vec view offset is an offset from the ground or the origin of the player to the to their eyes or maybe not the eyes but their camera or torso or whatever. You guys know this better than me, so we'll write down not FC but f4 and we will call it vec view now let's see if we can find some origin vectors here i don't think we can so we will search for in the string strings again we will search for vec origin now we have like the view uh, vec view offset, but uh, there's one without these brackets, so I'll just use this one instead. And you can see a lot of references here. So we will, like before, check the cross references within these references. We will look for something that looks similar to our situation before. So you can see in the de decompiled. Uh, window a lot more stuff fun stuff now 
we can see that our vec origin is at 124 and we will write it down we'll call that vec view so we know it's a vector and here we have the amazing team num we need that it's really important let's write it down e4 close to the health team num we could write the data types for all of these but ah it's only a bit important when we're uh, talking about vectors since they use free uh, floats and so on. Here you can see stuff like glow and yeah, so pick the offsets that you want. You can search for other ones. Let's see if I need another offset. I don't think I need any more offsets at least for this tutorial so you can continue this and just uh, go crazy in the in the candy shop but let's uh, check one of these so the back origin at 124 where is our local player there he is we will click on the pointer and add 124 we'll change it to float and this should be the x-axis because it's first so you can see that it changes and it looks like a float and a coordinate uh, let's add 8 bytes so we see the z-axis doesn't change and it goes positive when we jump that's that's promising so, you can check each of these if they work or not and add them to our list. I think that's going to be it for this tutorial. Uh, I'm sorry if you're disappointed that I couldn't explain in great detail everything I do. And that's because I don't really know that much. And uh, if you're here for the view matrix, we will look at that later. Because otherwise this video will, would be like one hour. Just finding upsets in one hour would be really annoying. Alright, see you guys in the next tutorial.